In hindsight, perhaps I should have explored more after such a long drive north. I probably should have stuck around and scouted some different angles onto Ben Loyal, and perhaps even pushed onto Ben Hope too. But it was raining so hard, and I was tired from a long day on the road the previous day. So I settled in behind the wheel and began the long drive south. As on the way up, I decided to check out another location to break the journey on the way back home. So I'm back finishing this trip where I started the last series. Well actually it's not this exact group of trees. There are a number of clumps just like this dotted around this valley. All of them just as picturesque as each other. Let me talk you through my composition. So I've gone in tight at 70 millimetres on this one and at the moment the sky is blue and it's not quite working. When I last came here, I thought that snow would be the thing that really made this picture work, with rippling undulations of the hills in the foreground, creating nice shapes with soft evening light. But actually driving down here, I realised that rain would separate it nicely as well. And we've got just that. Changeable conditions that go from sunny one minute to rain another. If I'm lucky, those conditions will hit just right and separate that group of trees from the mountain in the background. In a perfect world, I'd want rain coming down beyond the hill that the trees are on, creating separation between the trees and the mountain in the background. In fact, I'd want the rain so heavy that the mountain is all but obscured. Now it's just a waiting game. I played with this composition a little longer, and as the light began to fade, I even wandered beyond the trees to see if there were any angles that were worth shooting back the other way. I also revisited the trees that I'd photographed on the previous trip, but the sunset fizzled out without any nice light. The composition is just alright. I think it could work, but it will need more than a dusting of snow to really sing. Ever hopeful, I return the next day, but the mist and snow that the weather apps promised never materialised. I played with the compositions until sunrise, but I was clutching at straws. I even made my very own mist filter to try and improve things. I can confirm that these images were not great, but this location has potential. I'm just waiting for the right conditions. As I broke down my tripod, packed away my gear, and began my journey home, I started to reflect on the past few days. This had been an exhausting adventure. It ended up being two days of good conditions and focused photography, sandwiched by several days of rushed and unreflective travelling. Looking back at it now, I'm glad I explored as much as I did. What had been pins on a map are now places that are real to me, and editing the video footage and photos of my journey, I've begun to sketch a picture of what was previously unknown. I came up to the north in the hope of snow, and while there might have been less than I would have hoped, sometimes snow on distant peaks is better than a sleet storm in person. Although I didn't get exactly what I had envisaged on my trip to Asint and Koigak, with every visit I become more and more familiar with the landscape, and when the perfect conditions do present themselves, I'll be more and more ready. Thank you for watching this latest series. If you like this one, perhaps you might check out my previous trip to the Northwest Highlands of Scotland or subscribe and turn on notifications for when I next post a trip. I'll see you then.